Hey everyone, it's Lisa. I know it's been a long time, um, but because of the holidays and everything, it's just been kind of, like I always say, kind of crazy. Um, but I'm going to, lots been going on the last couple of weeks, so I'm going to go ahead and get you updated. Today, um, I'll get into what I am right now, just because like I said, a lot's happened. So let's go back about two weeks, probably about three weeks ago. Um, I had to go to labor and delivery for the first time because I started having a, some back pain and um, an increase in discharge and I was, uh, my stomach was getting really tight and there was a lot of lower pelvic pressure. So I talked to a whole bunch of people and they said, you know, if you're really that concerned, go in. And I didn't feel bad because I haven't been to the, you know, to the doctors before or to labor and delivery in the hospital. So. I was like, screw it. I went in and they did some tests. They did a pelvic exam. They swabbed me to see if I was leaking, um, leaking any fluids, if my water had broke, anything like that. And um, it all came back fine. I was there for probably about three hours total. They did say that there was some blood in my urine. And I asked them what that could be from. And they said it could be from a multitude of things. Um, but they checked me for a UTI, which is probably one of the most common ones. And I didn't have a UTI. So because of the pressure that I was feeling down there, what they, what they, what they think is, um, the baby's head got wedged down into my pelvis. And because his head is so large, like I said, when we went in for our gender ultrasound, um, his head was in the 95 percentile, there's a membrane that's attached to your pelvis that if he gets, because he was getting so big, it'll sometimes separate that membrane, which will cause a little bit of bleeding. So that's what they think that that was, just because he was head down and he is so big, but I wasn't dilated or anything like that. So it was kind of nice to just go in there. We hadn't been to the labor and delivery yet. So just to kind of get acquainted with it, they put um, the monitors on me. So just to kind of, have that knowledge already of what to expect was kind of nice so um so yeah everything was fine went to the doctors and had to do the one hour glucose test and my one hour glucose came back 151 yeah that's they want you to be 130 max or lower but i kind of knew that i was eating crappy <laughs> i had been eating really bad that week so it really didn't surprise me. Um, and then that day, that morning, I had been have I've been having horrible, horrible acid reflux. And the one thing that helped us with that, for some strange odd reason, um, Tums isn't helping. There's this water called Essentia, and um, you can find it at your local health food store or at your local grocery store in the health food section. And it's called Essentia, and it's a pH balanced water that helps. But unfortunately that day I had ran out because I've been drinking just so much of it that I had one of my coworkers run to McDonald's and get me a Coke because I don't know if it's the carbonation or what, but that really helps my acid reflux. So I had him go get me a Coke and then I realized two, like two hours before I was supposed to take the test, I was like, crap, this is full of sugar. So I stopped drinking it and started chugging some water. Um, but yeah, I wasn't surprised wasn't surprised that I failed the test. So they had me schedule my three hour, my three hour glucose test. And not just that, but a couple of my family members do have diabetes. And with the polycystic ovarian syndrome, with it being a insulin resistant um, issue to begin with, I'm really surprised that I ha don't have any issues with my, with like diabetes or high blood pressure or anything like that. So, and the doctors even kind of forewarned me that it's very um, possible with a PCOS to get that very common. So anyway, so I went and I did the three hour glucose test and um, I was kind of dehydrated because they tell you, you know, to fast for 12 hours. So the bad thing was, is I had to do some inventory at work that morning. So I didn't go to take my test until 1230. Um, so I didn't eat from 8 p.m. the night before until 5 p.m. the night after, right after I did my glucose test. 
So they couldn't find veins on me. They tried, they tried me three times in both sides of my arms. And finally they used a butterfly in the top of my hand. Um, just because I was dehydrated. And so after they did the first poke, my fasting, they um, just left uh, kind of like an IV for them to just go back in and get the vial. So he was there for three hours. I actually ended up sleeping and it went by really fast because I they have a really nice couch and they brought me a pillow and I, I slept through the hour periods before, you know, getting your test, your blood drawn. So anyways, I got a call from my doctor yesterday. Oh, that same day that I went for my three hour glucose test, I also had um, just an OB checkup and everything was looking fine. I had only gained a pound that month. And as most of you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas were, you know, last month. So the doctor was like, wow, I'm really surprised you only gained a pound. And I thought I was going to get yelled at. But he said because I had, I had like a seven pound gain the month before. He was like, it's okay that you only gained a pound. So not worried about that. Um, so now I go into the doctors every two weeks. So they called me, the doctors called me yesterday with the results from my three-hour glucose test and my glucose test came back normal. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, but the nurse told me, she was like, well, she was like, that's really good that you don't have any diabetes issues. Um, but we were kind of hoping that that explained why Elam is measuring so big. This entire time that I've been pregnant, he's been measuring three to four weeks large. And even with my fundus measurement, he's been two to three weeks large. So she said that they're going to um, schedule me for, because it's not a diabetes issue. I guess if you have diabetes, your babies are bigger. Um, so because that's not the reason why he's bigger, they're going to schedule me for another ultrasound to remeasure him and to change his due date. So she says it's a very big possibility that I am two weeks further along than what they thought. Because again, based on a 28 day cycle, my due date should be February 25th. But when I went in for the ultrasound compared to what the baby was measuring at that time, they have my due date as March 9th. So that's a two and a half week difference. And, um, so they've always put me on the higher end when I know that I'm at the lower end, if that makes any sense. So she was like, so you could be 31 weeks right now, but we're probably going to guess that you're 33 weeks. And I'm like, okay, you know, when you're 31 weeks, you're not really worrying about packing a diaper bag or a, a hospital bag and all this other stuff. When you start getting up to 33, 34, 36 weeks, you start worrying about that. Well, now I'm like, crap, I could be 33, 34 weeks <laughs> and I've got a lot to do. So she asked me if we had taken, um, if we had pre-registered the hospital and if we had a car seat and if I had started packing my, my diaper bag, you know, my hospital bag. And luckily, because I have been so excited about this pregnancy, um, I have started packing. Oh, excuse me. See, acid reflux sucks. <laughs> um, because I am so excited, I have started packing a hospital bag. We went the day after Christmas to Walmart, and I got um, some slippers that were on sale for the hospital, a longer robe, because I have a robe, but it's kind of short. So a longer robe, and... Um, like an old lady's pajama set. So it's pants and then a shirt that unbuttons so that I can um, breastfeed and stuff like that. So I had, oh, and then we bought like all of our little travel size toiletries and a toothbrush and little loofahs. And um, so I have started packing that. That, all, that day we also bought Elam's going home outfit. And so I'm, I'm pretty confident in that area. The only thing that I have left to pack um, is our stuff, like our clothes, and Elam's diaper bag is already packed, ready to go for the hospital. I've actually, yesterday, I after she called me, I went online and I put together a labor plan because me and my husband had already taken our Lamaze and labor and delivery classes. So I'll share, I'm going to make a separate little short video and I'm going to share my labor plan with you guys. And then um, probably here in about two weeks, 
I will have my completely packed um, hospital bag and I'll show you guys that. So just wanted to wish you all a um, happy new year and I hope everybody's safe tonight. And um, other than the acid reflux, probably the number one symptom that I've been ex um, having is I'm getting up every two hours right now to go to the bathroom at night. Um, he is just head down, way down, big head, that it puts so much pressure in my pelvic area that um, I'm, my, I'm up every hour and a half to two hours going pee. So I'm exhausted. I try and take naps, but he's moving so much. He's so much bigger that um, I think my body is putting me on a baby sleep schedule because no joke, every two hours I'm up going to the bathroom. So I try and go to bed early. It doesn't matter. I'm up every two hours. So either I'm up going to the bathroom or I'm craving like juice. So I'll go downstairs and get something to drink or get some water, um, which then makes me have to go pee. So it's like a never ending pee cycle. So other than the acid reflux, just constant going to the bathroom. I feel bad at work. I want to buy them like a huge Costco bundle of toilet paper because I know I'm probably depleting their supply very quickly <laughs> now that I'm pregnant. Um, Elam's Nursery is all put together. I have a baby shower on the 21st of June. Let's hope I make it that far. And um, yeah, I'll just keep you guys updated after I go for my ultrasound in a week or two um, to let you know exactly where I'm at. So it's going to say pregnancy vlog question mark question mark because <laughs> right now it's up in the air. When he gets here, he gets here. Um, so yeah. I'm going to do a quick belly shot and then I'm going to um, make that labor and delivery vlog. Love you guys. Mwah. All right. <sighs> You'll have to excuse me. Okay. So the lighting is not that great. And I'm like really close. Hold on. I'm going to move. So this is... Like I said, somewhere between 32, 31 weeks and 34 weeks. He is getting big. Um, I do now have six stretch marks. So I'm going to be one of those lovely women that have stretch marks. From the front. And then to the other side. He's getting more out. So... All right, you guys, I will talk to you later. Bye.